بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we'll continue from where we left off last week and we ended the we ended by completing the uh, third principle so we are on the fourth principle now from the book the six principles six principles so the sheikh he says he starts with he says al asl rabi so the fourth principle he says bayan al ilm wal ulama wal fiqh wal fuqaha wa bayan wa bayan man tashabbaha bihim wa laysa minhum wa qad bayyan allah ta'ala hadha al asl fi awwal surah al baqara min qawlihi يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم إلى قوله قبل ذكر إبراهيم عليه السلام يا بني إسرائيل الآية. so we'll just we'll stop there for a second. so the sheikh he begins with saying that we start in the fourth principle and he says that the fourth principle is clarifying knowledge and its people, the true scholars, the proper scholars, the the scholars upon guidance and uh, understanding as in fiqh in the deen so and understanding uh, what fiqh actually is and knowing its people as well and clarifying and making clear the people that resemble them as well so knowing the correct from the incorrect so looking at both sides so how how do we identify the true and correct and the people you know the scholars are on correct knowledge and correct understanding and how do we distinguish between them and the ones who are not from them but may appear similar so the sheikh is going to go through that today and then the sheikh mentions here in the second line he mentions that Allah Jalla Wala uh, with regards to this principle has clarified this in Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah from the verse that we read in Arabic from verse 40 so what's from that starts from verse 40 all the way to verse 122 then this principle that the Sheikh Havdhullah will explain then this is actually from the Quran of course and from the Sunnah but the majority being discussed and mentioned between ayah number 40 and ayah 122 of Surah Al-Baqarah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, al kathir al bayin al wadih lil ami al balid thumma sara hadha agrab al ashya wa sara al ilm wal fiqh huwa al bid' wa dhalalat wa khiyaru ma indahum labis al haq bil batil wa sara al ilm al ladhi faradahu Allah ta'ala ala al khalqi وَمَدَّحَهُ لَا يَتَّفُهُ بِهِ إِلَّا زِنْدِيكَ أَوْ مَجْنُونَ وَصَارَ مَنْ أَنْكَرَهُ وَعَادَاهُ وَصَنَّفَ فِي التَّحَذِيرِ مِنْهُ وَالنَّهِ عَنْهُ هُوَ الْفَقِيحَ الْعَالِمِ So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, and it will be uh, clarified, and, 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 the, and the Sunnah has clarified it further, in terms of what's going to be discussed today and the principle that's been mentioned, the sunnah has come with its clarification as well and uh, uh, with much clarification, clear as day, that even the general person can understand. Then the shaykh says, then the affair became strange, became a strange thing. So this principle about understanding who is upon the correct way and who is upon the incorrect way became a strange thing. And so what happened was, the people of knowledge were seen to be the people of um, uh, of misguidance, right? And the people of superstition and bid'ah, religious innovation and misguidance and deviation 
came to be seen as the people upon the correct way. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, and he says, so it was knowledge, the, the knowledge that Allah has made obligatory upon us, upon his creation, and that was um, praised. That knowledge itself, that that became, it came to be seen as only a crazy person or a heretic would speak about that. So things got, they, they, they went backwards, they went topsy-turvy. And the people who started attacking the Qur'an and the Sunnah and started warning the people from following this Qur'an and Sunnah, then they were, it became, the affair became that they were seen as those people upon the right way. And the Shaykh will explain this uh, throughout this chapter, inshallah, or this section. Uh, so we're going to get more details on, uh, full explanation on that and we'll translate it, inshallah. So then the Shaykh says, قال المصنف رحمه الله, the original author says, الأصل الرابع بيان العلم والعلماء والفقه والفقهاء وبيان من وبيان من تشبه بهم وليس منهم. so we've already read that. we won't translate that again. هذا الأصل أقده المصنف رحمه الله وأورده هنا لأنه أصل التبس على كثير من الناس واختلت عليهم دعاة الحق من دعاة الباطل وأصبح الناس يأخذون عن كل متكلم ويبتغون كل نائق ولا ولا يميزون بين أهل الحق والباطل بل ليس عندهم آلة يميزون بها بين من هو داعية للحق أو داعية داعية للهوى والباطل ورب العالمين أرشد في كتابه السائلين والمستفتين والمتعلمين أرشدهم إلى الأخذ عن أهل الذكر فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون ليس الأخذ عن كل أحد وإنما الأخذ عن أهل الذكر وهم أهل العلم والفقه بدين الله تبارك وتعالى وعندما يختلط هذا الأمر على الناس يصبح أخذهم وأخذهم عن كل يصبح أخذهم عن كل أحد وتلقيهم عن كل متحدث وهذا من أعظم أسباب الانحراف عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى وقد صح في الحديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن أخوف ما أخاف على أمتي الأئمة المدلين. Let's just take a break for a second there. So then the Sheikh says in this foundation, in this principle, that the author has clarified and pointed and uh, directed us to these evidences and what he's discussing in this chapter. Why? Why are we talking about this principle and discussing it? Is because many of the people you know, the judgment, the, them knowing what's true, what's uh, accurate in terms of the Quran and Sunnah and what opposes it, they become clouded. It's become clouded and they, you know, it's mixed, mixed up in their heads. They find it hard to be able to, uh, to distinguish. And, and then the Shaykh says, they, they, they find it hard to understand who is calling to the truth and who is calling to falsehood. And uh, and that's even in today, our time as well. And so the Sheikh, he says, the people have become such that they are taking from every person that talks, every person that's talking about the deen, they're just, they're taking, they're taking from them as if they're speaking the truth and the hundred percent, you know, the truth. And they take from anybody, anybody who talks about Islam, yeah, they'll be sitting there listening and they won't be able to distinguish truth from falsehood. And then the Sheikh, he says that the Lord of the worlds, you know, he's guided in his book, he's guided those who ask, who have a question, those who have questions, those who are seeking uh, edicts um, in, uh, or uh, judgments in, in, in their personal or other affairs or the ones who are learning. Allah has guided them. And uh, with what was he guided them with? Allah has guided them with asking the people of knowledge. Asking the people of dhikr, and then the Shaykh he quotes this ayah what we read in Arabic Fasalu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. If you don't know a thing, if you don't know something with regards to the deen, right? For example, then ask the people who know, the people of knowledge, the scholars. 
And then the Shaykh goes to say that he says that taking knowledge is you don't take knowledge from everybody who talks. It's not and 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 knowledge itself is not taken uh, from everybody or anybody. You know, and that rather the taking of that knowledge is from the people of the dhikr, the the scholars, and they are the people of knowledge and understanding. Uh, uh, they have they have the knowledge and understanding of the of the deen of Allah, the the religion of Allah, the baraka wa taala. And then the Shaykh says, and he says, when the affair becomes mixed or gets clouded, let's say, uh, you know, on the minds of the people and their intellects, what happens is that the taking of this knowledge, it, it becomes in such a affair that uh, the people are taking from anybody, whoever's talking, they're just taking from them without uh, uh, discretion. And they're taking this knowledge on everybody who's talking, they just take it, they'll take it, they sit in there, and anybody comes and he'll talk about the deen and they'll just take it. Without actually, uh, without any discussion whatsoever, and the Sheikh says that this is from uh, the greatest uh, reasons for deviation from the book of Allah or from the religion of Allah as a whole, Jalawala. And then the Sheikh mentions he mentions a hadith, the uh, a say hadith, uh, for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he said. And we read that in Arabic as well. That uh, the most, the most, the thing that I fear most for my ummah are the the scholars of mis or the imams or the scholars of misguidance. Those people who claim knowledge and misguide the people and send them down the wrong path. So then uh, we'll continue from where we left off, which was that. So then. Um, the Sheikh he says, "Wa imatul wa dalal hum man yalbisuna lubus al ilm wa yuzayinu wa yuzayinuna bi zayil ulama, walakinna hum yanshurun al bid'a fi al ummati wal khurafat wal ahwa wal dalalat wa ma la asl lahum fi din Allah wa 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 yalbisun al haq bil batil wa yaktumun al haq wa yah wa yahjubunahu." عن الناس فتنتشر على أيديهم البدعة وتنشر على أيديهم الخرافات ولا يزال أتباعهم يحس يحسنون بهم الظن ويظنون أنهم يبي يبينون دين الله عز وجل وتراه يؤيد باطله إما بحديث مكذوب أو آية أو آية يحرفها عن معناها أو قصة يخترعها أو رؤية منامية يدعيها أو تجربة يزعمها أو نحو ذلك من المصالك المتبعة إن هؤلاء في نشر ما عندهم من خرافة وباطل ولضعف البصيرة في الناس والفهم والدراية يروج عليهم كلام أمثال هؤلاء. So then the Sheikh goes on to say that the scholars of misguidance, the so-called scholars of misguidance, then they 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 dress up their uh, let's 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 say the simplest way to put it is that when they speak they they mix the truth with falsehood. I think that's the best way to put it. They mix the truth with the falsehood, and they beautify the speech. And whatever comes out of their mouths is uh, half truths or complete lies. So they, by way of this, they spread religious innovations in the deen. Uh, they are they come with superstitions. Um, they'll come with uh, uh, falling desires and other misguidances. And wherever they come with, with regards of these things, in regards to these things, then there's no foundation or basis for it in the religion of Allah Jalla Wala. So they, you know, they mix the truth with falsehood, as the Sheikh says here, and they hide the truth and they cover it and they cover it so the people are not able to attain that. And they, by that, by way of that, then they spread uh, upon their hands. They spread. Religious innovations, uh, superstitions, uh, and their followers. With all of this happening, their followers 
still have good thoughts about them. Because they're not able to distinguish between, they don't have the tools to distinguish between truth and falsehood. And they think, uh, and, and they think that these so-called, these uh, scholars of misguidance, they think, their followers think that they are actually clarifying and teaching them the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so you'll see, you'll see, you'll see him, you know, uh, uh, stre- uh, uh, helping his falsehood or strength his falsehood uh, by way or, uh, you know, backing up his falsehood or using evidence, using false evidence, of course. For example, they may have mentioned like uh, a hadith, uh, the relations of the Prophet that are made up, that are lies, or they mention the ayah of the Quran, for example, and they will, uh, uh, for example, they'll, they won't actually explain it as it should be explained. But they uh, they explain it according to their desires and what what their intentions are, yeah. Or they'll come with a story that they made up, just a made up story, just to get their point across and their falsehood. Or they'll say, oh, you know, they had such and such a dream, and this happened in this dream, and then that's why we should be doing such and such. Or they'll say, oh, I've got some experience, personal experience, or I've got experience with this, and so. They are spreading it by way of that, saying that I've got worldly experience in this thing, or the likes of that. The shakes, or the uh, you know the likes of these uh, things that 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 the that these uh, 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 so-called scholars of misguidance do. Yeah, uh, and and they do all of these. They, they they take up these are the main methods. There's others as well, but these are the main methods that the shakes mentioned that these people of misguidance come with to be able to push their filth. And uh, mislead the people from the straight path. Yeah. So then the Sheikh Gordon say, uh, mind, um, so he says, yeah, let's see where we stop. Yeah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here, mind ahum min khurafa wa batil wa lidha'fi al basira fin nasu. Then, yeah, this is where we stop. So the Sheikh says, and, and, and because of the weakness, of the people themselves in terms of their knowledge and vision because of their lack of knowledge and the deen then uh, and their understanding and their awareness then you know all of this is promoted to them and they accept it as it being the truth so then the shaykh goes on to say he says وَلِهَذَا عَقَدَ الْمُسَنِّفُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ هَذَا الْأَسْلَى نُصْحًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيَانًا لِهَذَا الْأَمْرِ أن يعرف الفقه والفقهاء والعلم والعلماء العلم والفقه أي النافع الذي أمر الله تبارك وتعالى به فليس كل فليس كل كلام يلقى هو فقه وليس كل بيان يبين هو فقه والعلم والفقه الذي مدح الله عز وجل أهله ورغب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في تحسيله وتلقيه هو العلم الشرعي المستمد من كتاب الله عز وجل وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم العلم قال الله قال رسوله هذا هو العلم على ضوء فهم الصحابة الكرام ومن اتبعهم بإحسان هذا هو هذا هذا هو العلم الذي امتدحه الله وهذا هو ميراث الأنبياء كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام so let's just stop there for a second. So then the Shaykh goes on to say uh, in the next part that we read, and this is the reason why the author of this book, uh, Shaykh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimullah, he mentioned what we're reading now, and the Shaykh's explaining this to us. This is the reason why he mentioned why to advise the people, to advise the Muslims. And to clarify this affair that we're talking about today, and that we uh, and that we know what uh, that we know what fiqh is, and we know its people, and we know what knowledge is, and we know its people. And the, the Sheikh says, "Al ilm, uh, knowledge and fiqh, i.e., beneficial knowledge, that Allah, uh, uh, that Allah has commanded uh, us to seek." And to have knowledge of, yeah, Tabarak wa Taala. So the Sheikh he goes on to say here that he says, "Falaisa kulu kalam." So he says, "Not every speech is taken, and not every speech, you know, that is passed on or that is said or you hear, 
it's fiqh from fiqh. And not every uh, clarification, for example, or uh, somebody standing up giving you, you know, trying to pass on some kind of knowledge or whatever it is, actually is fiqh or understanding. And and he says that knowledge and understanding it, al-fiqh, uh, that Allah has praised Azza wa Jal and his, and his people and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, uh, uh, has, you know, uh, uh, encouraged us to to seek and attain and to learn is the knowledge of the Sharia. The knowledge of the Sharia uh, supported, uh, which is from, what is the, uh, where is that from? We know the sources and it's from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what is knowledge? It is, the Shaykh says here, he says, it was knowledge is what Allah said and what his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. That is knowledge. He says, this is knowledge in the light of the understanding of the Sahaba, the noble Sahaba, and whoever follows them with goodness, in good. He says, this is knowledge, that which Allah praised, uh, and uh, that is the inheritance of the prophets. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is where we stop, so let's read some uh, excerpts from hadith, a hadith. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُورَثُوا uh, uh, لَمْ يُورَثُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا وَإِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ فَمَنْ أَكَذَهُ أَكَذَ بِهَذِمْ وَافِرْ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْعِلْمَ الَّذِي شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ لِصَاحِبِهِ بِالْخَيْرِيَّةِ مَنْ, من يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينَ خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سحر الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة وإن الملا وإن الملائكة وإن الملائكة لتدع أجنحتها لطالب العلم رضا بما يصنع. So let's just uh, go through the translations of those and then we'll carry on those uh, hadith. So the first of them, uh, as we all know, the Sheikh he mentions here quotes. He says, "Indeed, the prophets they don't inherit a, a dinar, nor a dirham, and indeed they inherit knowledge. So whoever takes that, then he's taken much, as in a lot. Whoever learns this uh, din, this knowledge, then he has been he's taken a massive portion." It's a great thing, yeah. Then the next hadith: Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him understanding in His religion. Then the next hadith: The best of you are the ones who learn the Quran and teach it. And then the next one is: Whoever takes a path, a seeking in this path knowledge, then Allah makes His path to Jannah easy. And indeed, the angels they put that they they put down their wings for the they they lower their wings for the seeker of knowledge, pleased with which they are doing. So all this, as you can see, you know, it's all praiseworthy. But seeking the seeking knowledge brings. So the Sheikh brings these evidences for us to help us understanding the explanation that he's given us. So he goes on to say, كل الأحاديث التي وردت في الترغيب في العلم والحث عليه فالمراد بها العلم الشرعي. So then the Sheikh says here that all of these, like some of these hadith that we mentioned here, that he's mentioned, he says that that was where these hadith have come to um, encourage you to seek knowledge. Then it's with regards to seeking the Islamic knowledge It doesn't mean uh, Oh go and become a doctor Go become an engineer Go become whatever else um, In the worldly knowledge It's it's referring to Islamic knowledge yeah? The knowledge of the Sharia This is this is what's, what it's in, what it means It doesn't mean How some people do say incorrectly Oh yeah you know any knowledge It's not any knowledge This is restricted to, to um, Islamic knowledge This is what's meant here This is what the Sheikh has said to us as well here 
شو دان الشيخ غوزن شو سيه والمراد بالفقه بالفقه الفقه الذي يستمد من كتاب الله عز وجل سواء سواء أريد بالفقه الفقه الأكبر الذي هو الأقيدة وأصول الدين أو الفقه الأصغر الذي هو الأحكام والفروع فهذه فهذه كلها فقه في دين الله تبارك وتعالى ولا يكون هذا الفقه صالحا سديدا إلا إذا كان مستمدا من كتاب الله عز وجل وسنة رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام على دو فهم السلف الصالح رحمه الله رحم الله So then uh, the Sheikh mentions here that and the, the meaning of uh, fiqh here is that fiqh or the deen and understanding with regards to what comes from the uh, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, whether it uh, was, uh, whether that what is sought or wanted is fiqh al-akbar, i.e. Uh, aqidah and the foundations of the deen, the foundations of the deen or the fundamentals of the deen, or al-fiqh al-asgar, which, uh, which is either, you know, from the rulings, judgments, and the other uh, um, uh, super uh, supererogatory, uh, um, not supererogatory, but the, I um, can't remember the word for English, to be honest with you, but um, like, for example, we've got Akida, which is the main, um, uh, the main or the foundations of fundamentals and the other uh, parts of the deen that are not from the fundamentals. And that's what is known as Fiqh al-Askar. So if you ever see uh, a book uh, that's mentioning, for example, Fiqh al-Akbar, then know that it's referring to uh, the fundamentals of the deen, al-Tawheed, al-Aqidah, etc. And if it's Fiqh al-Askar, then it's like, for example, um, you know, uh, how to pray, how to do your Hajj, how to, uh, what are the rulings on fasting and these sort of things. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so that's what that usually means. And the Sheikh mentions here that understanding uh, the fundamentals of the deen and uh, or knowing the fundamentals of the deen and 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 other parts of the deen, as we mentioned, fiqh al-akbar and fiqh al-asqar, then then it needs to be from the Quran upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, rahimahullah, the first three generations uh, of the Muslims. Yeah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says to us, وَإِنَّمَا لَا تُمَيِّزُ هَذِي الْحَقِيقَةِ تُخَلِّتُ تُخَلِّتُ أو تُخَلِّتُ أُمُورَ فِي هَذِ الْبَابِ وَتُسَمَّى عِلْمًا فَتُضَرُّ بِالنَّاسِ غَايَةَ الضَّرَرِ وَمِنْ أَعْذَمِ ذَلِكَ خَطَرًا عَلَى النَّاسِ وَأَدْهَاهُ عَلَيْهِمْ عِلْمُ الْكَلَامِ الَّذِي بَنَى عَلَيْهِ أَرْبَابُهُ عَلَيْهِ أَرْبَابُهُ فَهْمْ دِينَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِمُعْزِلْ عَنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ نَبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَصَارَ الْوَاحِدْ مِنْهُمْ فِي تَقْلِيرِهِ لِأُمُورِ دِينِ وَأُمُورِ الْإِعْتِقَادِ يَذْكُرُ أَقْلِيَاتِ وَتَصَوَّرَاتِ وَفَلْسَفَاتِ مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانِ فَإِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ أَنْ يُقَرِّرَ عَقِيدَةً عَقِيدَةً قَالَ بِمَا أَنْ كَذَا يَكُونُ كَذَا وَلَوْ كَانَ كَذَا لَكَانَ كَذَا فَيَمْضِي بِهَذَا الْأُسْلُوبِ فِي تَقْرِيرِ الْإِعْتِقَادِ و وبين يديه كتاب الله وبين يديه كتاب الله ناطق بالحق وبين يديه سنة رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام شاهدة بالحق وضالة ودالة عليه فيؤرد عنهما ثم يقحم عقله القاصر وتصوراته الضعيفة فيبدأ يقرر في الاعتقاد ما لا أساس له ولا أصل عليه خود خود في الله وفي دين الله وفي شرع الله بلا علم وهذا من أعظم المحرمات وأكبر الآثام. So then the Sheikh goes on to say in this uh, starting of this page. So he says, and when when we get to a point, for example, where uh, we can't um, distinguish truth from falsehood, and where affairs become mixed up. And truth gets mixed up with falsehood, for example, in this in 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 this topic that we're discussing, and then it's, for example, called knowledge. Then, by way of that, people are harmed. 
they are they they are harmed by this. And he says that from the greatest uh, dangers to the people or uh, upon the people is something called ilmul kalam rhetoric, which which is basically um, which the people who use this ilmul kalam they on, they only use their uh, intellect and they discard evidences from the Quran and Sunnah. So they put their intellect first over the Quran and the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah and they end up with a wrong understanding of the religion. This is one faction called Ilmu Kalam. A lot of people are affected by this even today. Um, for example, like uh, uh, of old Jahmis, Jahmiya, uh, and of today still around uh, the uh, al Ashaira and other groups like that affected by Ilmu Kalam. And the Mu'tazilis and others. So um, then the Sheikh he says that what, why? Because they 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 do not go to the the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Rather, what they'll do is, for example, is they will just in terms in the affairs of Aqidah, which are from the fundamentals of the Deen, as we know, they'll start using their you know their intellect only and what they think and the such and such philosophy. They tend to philosophy. And they have no authority of doing that. You know, they have no authority. Allah has not given them authority to do that. But they then they do this and they misguide themselves and others. So, for example, the Sheikh says if he wanted to, for example, explain or, uh, uh, you know, explain what the Aqidah is, what the correct Aqidah is, then they'll go and turn to their intellect philosophy they'll say oh if it's like this then this is like this and if you have this situation then it's like this and etc and so the person continues like this with in this way uh in this way uh in defining what the uh what uh the akida what the correct akida is or what the akida of the muslim should be without using without referring to the book of allah azza wa jal and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the and the book of Allah is in front of them is accessible, and the Sunnah of the Prophet is accessible, but they they discard it, yeah. And then this person uses a limited intellect which we have, which we have been given, and he'll only use that to go about uh, um, evidencing what the correct aqidah is and other affairs of the Deen incorrectly, yeah, and not on the way of what the Prophet came with and the companions. And their approach has no basis from the deen and no foundation. And they enter into uh, discussions uh, about Allah and about the deen of Allah and about the legislation of Allah Jalla wa'ala without ilm. Yeah. And the Sheikh says that this is from, from the greatest of uh, prohibitions and from the biggest of sins. So then the Sheikh, he mentions an ayah here. He says, وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْئُولًا So the first ayah is from Surah Al-A'raf 33 and then the final ayah that we just read now from Surah Al-Isra verse 36. So if we go to the translation then, the English trans- meanings, the translation of the meanings, then if you'll have a look, give me a moment to pull this up. So Surah Al-A'raf verse 33. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Let me try and find this for you, brother. Give me one second. Yeah, here we are. And saying things about Allah of which you have no knowledge. So that's the first one. And Surah Al-Isra verse 36. And follow not, O man, I say not, or do not, or witness not, etc. That of which you have no knowledge. E.g. one saying, I have seen, while in fact he has not seen, or I have heard, while he has not heard. Verily, the hearing and the sight and the heart of each of those, you will be questioned by Allah. Jalla wa'ala. So, that's clear to us, alhamdulillah. Then we'll carry on. So then the Shaykh goes and says, وَبَاتَ عِلْمُ التَّوْحِيدَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَعْذَمَ الْعُلُومِ وَأَجَلِّهَا يُسَمَّ بِسَبَبْ تَعْلُقْ هَاُولَا بِعِلْمِ الْكَلَامِ Yusama ilm al-kalam, yusama ilm al-tawheed indahum or ilm al-aqeedah, yusama ilm al-kalam. 
ويبدا هؤلاء في تكرير الاعتقاد على الكلام الباطل والخوض في دين الله عز وجل بالاقليات والاراء وقد قال ابن ابي العز رحمه الله في شرحه للعقيده التحاويه كيف يرام الوصول الى علم الاصول بغير ما جاء به الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام اي ان هذا محال لا يمكن لا يمكن للانسان أن يصل إلى الأصول الصحيحة والعقيدة السليمة دون أن يتلقى ذلك عن رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام ولا يمكن أيضا أن يعرف العبادة أن يعرف العبادة الصحيحة إلا بالتلقي عن الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام ولهذا قال العلماء كل طريق إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى مسدود إلا من طريق الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يمكن للإنسان أن يصل إلى هدى وإلى حق وإلى علم وإلى علم علم نافع وإلى سديد قول سديد سديد قول وصالح عمل إلا باتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعل وجعله أسوة وقدوة في أقيدته وإبادته وعمله. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say Uh, just moving on from where we left off about the people of rhetoric or ilmul kalam, the mutakallimun, he mentions here that when it comes to, for example, at tawheed and al uh, they call they call it they call they call the foundations like this. They call al aqida and at tawheed. They call it ilmul kalam. They just call it ilmul kalam. And the sheikh he says that when they explain or define and they discuss. Uh, uh, Aqeedah for example Then uh, they, they, they enter into false speech uh, And falsehood With regards to the deen of Allah well, How? Because all they're doing is using their intellect And their opinions And if their intellect um, Or their opinions uh, uh, You know Suit uh, the evidences that they read From the Quran or the Sunnah Then they will accept it But if it doesn't go, if it doesn't sit well with their own intellect, they will reject it based on their own intellect. Obviously, this is a dangerous thing to be doing, uh, but, you know, that's their way. Then the Sheikh says, and he quotes, he quotes a scholar of old, Ibn Abi Al-Iz, Rahmahullah, in his explanation of Al-Aqidah Al-Tahawiyah, he basically said that how can you reach the the foundational fundamental pieces of knowledge in our deen without taking it from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you're going to uh, subtract that from your way of seeking knowledge and you're just going to use your brain and go about doing your own thing and not take it from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who actually came with the deen and was sent to us then how will you ever learn and know the fundamentals of the deen you will never know And the Shaykh would say, he says, i.e., and that it's, it's impossible for someone, if he does not take from the Prophet ﷺ as it came, it's impossible for a person like this to, to actually gain the correct knowledge. Yeah. And the Shaykh goes on to say that it's also not possible that, uh, that the person knows the correct way of worshipping, except by taking it from the Prophet ﷺ, taking knowledge. From the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and 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 the Sheikh he goes and say that that's why the scholars they say that every path to Allah subhanahu wa taala is blocked, except the path of the uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, except the path that where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, from as in what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with. It's not possible for a person that he reaches guidance. And 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 reaches the truth, uh, uh, and reaches beneficial knowledge, yeah, and 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 by way of that uh, reaches and by uh, is able to do good acts, righteous acts, except by following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the only way we can do any of those aforementioned actions, except is by way of following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah. Made him, you know, you know, 
a fine example for us. Allah made him a role model for us. You know, in terms of his aqidah, in his worship, in his, his actions. So he is our role model. And so without, if we're not following that role model, then we're going nowhere. You know, you, you're you on a dangerous path to dist of destruction. So then the Shaykh, he mentions the ayah from the Quran regarding uh, this, uh, uh, about uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, he quotes, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِرِ so that's from Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 21. And if we go to the uh, translation of that, then we'll see that it says, Indeed, in the message of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes in the meeting with Allah on the last day and remembers Allah much. That's all ayah that we read. And so then the Shaykh goes on to say, continuing, he says, وَمَنْ فَارَقَ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ ظَلَّهُ وَلِهَذَا كَانَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنُ تَيْمِيَ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا مَا يَقُولُ مَنْ فَارَقَ الدَّلِيلُ ظَلَّ السَّبِيلُ وَلَا دَلِيلَ إِلَّا مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ وَيَقُولُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ كُلٌّ يَسْتَدِلُ لِقَوْلِهِ لَا بِهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَكَلَامُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَكَلَامُ رَسُولِهِ عليه الصلاة والسلام هو الحجة وكلام غير الله وكلام غير الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام ليس حجة وإنما تطلب له الحجة أو تطلب له الحجة إن وجدت في كتاب الله أو سنة رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام فإن وجدت فإن وجدت فإن وجدت وإلا رد عليه قوله فَهَذَا مَعْنَا قَوْلِ مَالِكُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ كُلٌّ يُؤْخَذْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ وَيُتْرَكْ إِلَّا صَاحِبْ حَادِ الْقَبْرِ يعني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So then in this uh, paragraph, the shaykh he says, So whoever departs from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, or uh, departs from that which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came with is misguided. And this is the reason why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahmahullah used to say a lot that whoever departs from the evidence, then he has left, he's been he's misguided, uh, he's misguided from the straight path. And there is no evidence except by way of what the Prophet came with. And that's why uh, he also said, Rahmahullah, he said, uh, you know, whoever. Uses by way of evidence or evidences with, uh, with his uh, with his speech. Um, whoever evidences um, by uh, let me put this in an easier way. Whoever ev whoever seeks to evidence whatever he's saying, uh, except uh, by way of what Allah said in His Messenger, then that's that is the correct way, or or it's accepted. And if it isn't, then it's not accepted. And so then the Sheikh explains this. He says. The speech of Allah and the speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are evidence, are classed as evidence. And speech other than the speech of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it's not classed as, that's not evidence. It's, it's not evidence. Uh, rather, he says that that evidence, it's, it's seen as evidence or accepted as evidence if it's from the book of Allah or from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if it's found there, what you're saying or what we might be saying and and we have evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, then then it's accepted, otherwise it's rejected. And and then the Shaykh says this is this and, and this is the meaning of the speech of Imam Malik Rahimahullah when he said that uh, um he says he so so people was when a normal person is speaking, you know either you know the person considers it or takes it and leaves it. Sometimes it's taken. Sometimes it's left and not accepted. Or you know, you like you don't consider it. Except the 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 person of this grave, the person who's in this grave. He meant as in uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So meaning that whatever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said is taken. We take it full on. We don't reject it. We like yes, that's the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it. We're following that. And this is what. Uh, the uh, what Imam Malik 
intended by that, or the Sheikh has explained. So then the Sheikh he goes and says, وَكَمَا يُشِيرِ الْمُسَنِّفِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ هُنَا الْمُصِيبَةِ الْنَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ أَذُمَتْ لِأَنَّهُمْ أَصْبَحُ لَا يُمَيِّزُونَ بَيْنَ دُعَاتَ الْحَقِّ وَأَدْئِيَاءَ الْبَاطِلِ بَلْ أَصْبَحَ بَعْضُ الْأَوَامِ يَمِيلُ فِي تَلَقِّهِ وَفِي اسْتِفْتَائِهِ إِلَى مَنْ يَرَاهُ يُفْتِيهِ بما يريد أو من يراه يفتيه على هوا وتجده ينتقل بين من يفتون واحدا تلو الآخر إلى أن يقع على شخص يرخص له يرخص له في ما يريد ليس منشود الحق ليس ليس منشوده الحق ومطلوبه دين الله عز وجل وإنما منشوده الأمر الذي اتجه للسؤال عنه أو طلب الرخصة فيه وهذا من المصائب العظيمة أسبح في الناس من لا يميز بين الفقه والفقهاء والعلم والعلماء وأسبح الداعية للبدعة الذي لا يسمع منه تقرير الاتقاد الصحيح والدين ودين القويم لا دوء الدليل المستمد من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام يعد عند بعد الناس عالما وفقيها So let's just stop there for a second So then the Sheikh says and he says here and as the uh, author of the book we're reading the author indicates to us may Allah have mercy upon him here that uh, a great uh, 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 you know um, a great uh, calamity for the people in this topic that we're discussing today. Um, it's become a great tragedy for, because because the people uh, are, are not able to distinguish between the caller of the caller to truth and the caller to falsehood. And and he says rather, you know, some of the uh, general folk they they started like leaning towards taking. From, uh, uh, from uh, you know, taking knowledge from, for example, listening to, and you know, seeking edicts and judgments um, uh, from those that they they, they 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 see, you know, as somebody who's, who's who's knowledgeable when they're not. So they seek edicts. Why? And also because because they want something. So you'll see somebody, uh, for example, trying to seek out such and such a person to. Uh, again, edict or judgment in in an affair of theirs upon their um, upon their um, desire, and you'll find this person, for example, go from one person to the next, one after the other, to seek uh, some kind of um, concession that they are after uh, because of their desires. So they're not doing it to. Uh, because they want to know what's the best thing to do in truth and distinguishing between truth and falsehood and trying to seek the right way, they've already got a pretense to it. And they're just going from one person to the next and, and you know, they find a lot of the answers from the people of falsehood for what they want, uh, from their desires. And the Sheikh says here that you won't find them, for example, you, you won't see that their a goal, their goal is to to seek out the truth, you know, uh, from, you know, from that which is from the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Rather, their, their goal is uh, the affair that they, the, or the question that they came with, or the request that they're seeking for a concession in that. So so, so they've already got a pretense, and, and, and this is their goal, to seek that pretense, to see whichever scholar or whoever of these scholars of falsehood are going to say, yeah, okay, that's okay for you to do, whatever it may be, even though it's wrong. And the Sheikh says this is from the great calamities. He says that it has become that the people are not able to, uh, they, 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 they don't distinguish, not even able to, they don't distinguish between uh, fiqh and its people and knowledge and its people. And so the uh, the caller to a religious innovation who's, who should not be listened to or taken from He's the one who, you know, they take from in terms of their um, aqidah, you know, their fundamentals of their deen, their belief, and, this, and, and they take their religion from them. 
Yeah. And so, obviously, as we know, the Shaykh mentioned here, the deen should be taken uh, from the, the Kitab of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And so, in some, with some of the people, it is considered that the person who they are taking knowledge from, even though he's on falsehood, that, oh, they think he's a, he's a alim, or, you know, he's, he's knowledgeable, he's a scholar, and he's a faqih. And the Shaykh says also that the opposite has happened here. So he says that the knowledge, he says that the alim, so he says, Al Alim al Mundabit bi the Wabit al Kitab was Sunna al Mutakayid bima jaafi kitabi lai was Sunnati Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yurma bi Osaf Yunafar biha nasan hu wal Osaf al Ti Yermuna biha al Ulama al Ladina hum ala Sunnati wa ala Talaki min kitabi lai as a wajel kathira tun jiddan fil Kadim wal Hadith. So then the Sheikh he says in the opposite as well. He says that the the scholar who 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 is precise with regards to his knowledge and uh, you know by you know taking his knowledge from the book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam and sticking to that and making sure that he does not go out of that as correctly you know that's a correct that's the way of doing it. How you should seek knowledge and how 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 you know it, that's a correct the scholars upon the right way. Then this person he's you know. Uh, you know, insulted and called names, and uh, is described in all sorts of lowly ways, so that people uh, run away from this person. So these people of falsehood do this to divert the people from the truth and from its people who are cutting the truth, the scholars. Yeah, and so they are, you know, insulted with these nasty names and you know name calling and that they so and so and they do this and they do that. All lies, of course. Uh, so that people are diverted away from the Quran and the Sunnah, and and the Sheikh mentions that this is uh, uh, something of uh, it's old, it's history within history, but it's also uh, in, in modern times as we see it. So we'll finish inshallah in eight minutes. So we'll see if we can. Let me just have a quick look where we are. We still got a bit to go, really. Um, so let's go back. So then the Sheikh he says. قال بيان العلم والعلماء والفقه والفقهاء وبيان من تشبه بهم وليس منهم يشير ها هنا إلى أن في في الناس من يشتب من يشتبه بأهل العلم ويتظا ويتظاهر بالعلم وهو في الواقع يدس البدع وينشر وينشر الباطل والخرا والخرافة والخرافة بين الناس لا ينشر دين الله عز وجل وإنما ينشر خرافات خرافات باطلة وبدع ضالة هذا هذا الذي عنده وها وهذه بذاته لكنه يتظاهر بمظهر العلم والفقه والبصيرة في دين الله فيغر العوام ويخدع الجهال. So then we move on to the next part of this lesson. And that is where the Sheikh mentions, and those people who um, seem that they are from the people of knowledge, or who resemble the people of knowledge, and in actual fact they are not from the people of knowledge. So the Sheikh he says that the original author he he points us towards this now and uh, uh, to to this part of the topic about those who resemble the people of knowledge and not from them. And he says that in them are the people who resemble the people of knowledge. And they make apparent that that they have knowledge, but in reality, deep within their pockets, for example, is you'll find um, religious innovations and falsehood and uh, superstition that they spread be, uh, uh, around to the people. You won't find them spreading the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Rather, you spend you'll find them spreading. Um, superstitions, falsehood, religious innovations, and all kinds of misguidances, misguidance. And the Sheikh says that this, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, and this is what they have. These are their possessions. These people of falsehood. However, they make apparent uh, uh, an appearance of uh, knowledge and understanding, and you know, vision in the Deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So by that. They trick the people and um, 
they trick the people, yeah, uh, 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 the the people, the general folk, and the ignorant ones. So the Sheikh he says, "Qala wa qad bayna Allah azza wa jal hadh al asla fi awli surat al Baqarah min qawlihi ya bani Israel al-Quru ni'mati al-lati an'amtu alaykum ila qawlihi ya bani Israel al-Quru ni'mati al-lati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadaltukum ala al-alamin." مشيرا إلى أن في هذا السياق مشيرا إلى أن في هذا السياق بيانا لهذه الحقيقة وإيضاحا إلى أن العالم الحق شأنه ذكر نعمة الله عليه وفضله عليه عليه وشكره لنعمة الله تبارك وتعالى وعدم لبسه الحق بالباطل وعدم كتمانه للحق ومحافظته على ما أمر من إقامة الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة والبعد عن أن يكون شأنه أن يكون شأنه شأن من يدعو إلى الشيء ولا يأمله أتأمرون الناس بالبر وتنسون أنفسكم فهذا السياق المبارك عندما يتأمله المسلم وطالب العلم يجد فيه ضوابط يميز بها بين العلماء والأدياء فالعلماء لهم صفات صفاتهم والأدياء لهم صفاتهم وكلها مبينة في هذا السياق وفي مواضع وفي مواضع أخرى أيضا من كتاب الله عز وجل تكشف هذا الأمر وتجلي هذه الحقيقة so in this paragraph, then the Sheikh, he, he reminds us from when we read earlier on at the start of the lesson that this affair that we're talking about with regards to um, that uh, where Allah clarified this foundational principle, the fourth principle that we're discussing with regards to how to distinguish from the scholars of truth and the scholars of the cult of falsehood. Then that was from the ayahs that we read. It was from... Uh, if we go back, it was from 40, I believe, Surah to Bakra verse 40 or 44, all the way to 140, I believe. If you go back to the lesson at the start, you'll see um, uh, the references there. So then the Sheikh says that this, if we, if we read this, so at the end of the day, that'll be homework for us to uh, go to the start of the lesson where I mentioned there, and we can, we can, Whoever understands Arabic can read it in Arabic on Tafsir of Arabic, or we can read the English translation, the meanings, and read these ayahs as the Sheikh mentioned. And the Sheikh says that this indicates here that you know, within the context of uh, what we're discussing, is the uh, is in, in what um, is the reality, and and it, it, uh, where Allah you know, uh, there's a there's light on this affair that we're talking about today. This foundational principle, how we know that uh, the the alim of truth. The scholar of truth, um, and the scholar of truth is what is to mention the blessings of Allah and the virtue, his virtues, and to thank Him for His blessings, to Barakah wa Taala, and not to, uh, you know, you know, mix uh, truth with falsehood, and not to um, cover up the truth and hide it, and. And for for the scholar or for the person upon the truth is also that he uh, preserves that which he's been commanded to do. For example, uh, praying the salah and giving the zakah and staying far away from those affairs. Yeah. For example, calling to other than that. Uh, uh, for example, calling to something and then not acting upon it yourself. So these are all these qualities, these descriptions of the true person of knowledge. And then the Shaykh mentions an ayah here from uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 44. You know, do you call, in general meaning, do you command the people with doing all kinds of good acts and doing good acts and actions and forget yourselves? And the, uh, Allah said this to the Jews. Yeah, this was revealed to the Jews and obviously generally as well to everybody. Yeah, but at the time, as you mentioned, to the Jews, 
the Jews because why? They're well known, the Jews are well known that they command people, yeah, to do things, but they don't do it themselves, yeah. So the Sheikh says that in this context, this is a uh, you know, it's quite blessed. He says that this is a blessed context that if we if we ponder, if the Muslim ponders over this or the seeker of knowledge, the student of knowledge and the seeker of knowledge ponders over this, he'll find in it precise points that help him. They help us and they help him to distinguish between the ulama, uh, the the true ulama and the callers to the deen of Allah Azawajal. And as you can see, the Sheikh says that the ulama, they have their descriptions and they have their characteristics and so do the callers to Allah Jalla wa ala, the dua, they have their characteristics and their descriptions. And all of this is all of this is clarified uh yeah and in other and in other places from the kit from the book of Allah Zawajal. Uh and so the affair is clear, it's clear as day. It's clear as day and the reality you you'll know then. So uh I encourage everybody to read uh those ayahs and the tafsir of it as well to help you understand the affair. So inshallah what we'll do is uh, we still have uh let me see one one to just two pages left so what we'll do is we will finish this next week because i don't want to go on for longer than an hour because it's, it's, it's late as well inshallah so we'll conclude there and we'll continue next week and finish this principle off next week with night ala subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh